श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं श्रुतिस्मृति आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंकोकशंक शरीरागछती अपगछतीवेती You see, the bodies come and the bodies go. Like the new set of clothes comes when the old set of clothes goes. I remain the same. Here, uh, what we think is, uh, we believe that we are moving from one body into the another. It is not like that. You remain what you are. The bodies come and the bodies go. See, generally, this is where uh, we have to reorganize our thinking correctly. <clears throat> we believe that we come into this world and go out of this world. That is how we believe. That is wrong. You don't come into this world and don't go out of this world. The world come happens to you when you wake up and when your awareness is in place the entire world up makes an appearance in the in the awareness and then uh, the entire world disappears the awareness remains the same therefore you don't come into the world and go out of the world the world comes into you with the light of awareness and the world appears for a while and then it stops appearing that is one thing i can say to this extent as long as you think that uh, you come into this world and go out of this world you will not come to know the nature of yourself <clears throat> when you understand that you are the locus or the light of awareness into which the world comes and makes an appearance and then out of which awareness the world vanishes then you will come to know yourself correctly this is one thing then a second thing there are three states waking dream and sleep you think you are moving from one state into another state into another state you are not moving you remain what you are the states happen in fact they stay nothing ever happens to you the states do not happen to you they happen they don't happen to you it is like uh, the movie appears or it happens it doesn't happen to the screen the screen remains the same as it was before the movie appeared therefore the fact is nothing ever happens to you therefore the waking state happens it is replaced by the dream state replaced by the sleep they get sequentially replaced one after the other in whatever sequence they they appear before you and they disappear before you you are not moving and nothing is happening to you nothing ever happens to you this is second thing then finally <clears throat> coming to the point which is being discussed here as long as you feel and believe that there is a body and then there is a mind in that body and then there is atma in that mind so long you will not come to know the truth of the self because that is wrong this is ye to dvaita ho gaya ri dvaita the dvaita charya say there is a body and then there is a mind inside the body and in that mind there is atma which is anuparimana <coughs> which is as a tiny as an atom anu is atom and now atom is how much so you have to say some silly thing about it <coughs> which doesn't stand the scrutiny of science because science measures the sizes 
Therefore, uh, just imagining something, atom is so small, like that. Some imagination. Like you are in a dark room, a ray of sunlight enters into the dark room and in that light beam, you see dust particles, one-sixth of that dust particle is atom. Now, what is that? You have nicely imagined it. This is the Nayayika. They imagined it like that. So, they don't have any way of uh, measuring the size of the particle or any such thing. Also, all dust particles are not of the same size. Their sizes vary in a big range. Therefore, they don't have any wherewithal to understand all that, to measure, etc. Therefore, we can understand. So, this view that here is the body and then there is a mind inside it, and then there is Atma inside the mind is wrong. And as long as you take things like that, you will not come to know the truth of the Self. Because you have put yourself in a wrong, uh, in a wrong mode, in a wrong fixation. The fact is, uh, you are not in the body. The body is in you. You should not think that uh, Akasha is inside the pot. Pot is in the Akasha. So, in a given context you may want to say it, but you should know. If you know it and say it, then it is fine. Suppose you believe that there is no Akasha outside the pot, only inside the pot Akasha is there. Then what happens to your thinking? It is wrong. Similarly, people believe that there is Atma inside the body. That is wrong. Therefore, you are not in the body. The body is in you. The body comes to light, in the light of awareness, which is you, okay? And the mind is in you. You are the infinity of consciousness in which the mind comes to light and in which you are the immensity of consciousness in which the body comes to light. Therefore, uh, this equation with the reference to the body has to be carefully worked out, and uh, you have to uh, you have to know it. You have to know it deep within you. That is called self knowledge. Okay, there is a lot more to know about the self, but this is a good beginning. Now, the acharya is ob- obviously very happy with what this young man said. So he is saying. Acharyo Bruyat. <coughs> you see, what the young man said, some of it is very nice and some of it is not so nice at all. So, before correcting the student, the Acharya is encouraging the student first. Sadhvavadi. <coughs> you have said very well. This Avadi is a very beautiful usage. Lung it is. Vadati. Okay? Avadat lang, avadit lung. <coughs> okay? So, so avadi madhyama purusha ekavachanam. Sadhu avadi dear son, you have said very correctly. Samyak pashyasi. Yes, you, you see correctly. You see, you see, he uses the word pashyasi. You see correctly that. You are not the body, body is like a dress which we give up and which we put on again. Therefore, I am not the body. That part of it is very nice. But then how come you have talked some nonsense also? That is what the Acharya is saying. Katham Rusha Vadi. Rusha Katham Avadi. So how come you have spoken? Uh, some unreal, uh, uh, wrong things. Murusha is uh, asatya, which is not the truth, untruth. You have said, <coughs> what is that untruth? Brahmana putraha adon vayaha brahmacharyasam grahasthova idani masmi paramaham saparivrat it is this, this description that you gave about yourself, there cannot be anything farther from truth than this. So,
so i am the son of a brahmana that is how he started adon vayah adon vayah is i said already asau anvayah yasya sah adon vayah bahuvri samasa adas is the shabdam pratipadika therefore adas remains in the samasa the sup disappears only adas remains right you know that right so adas plus anvaya that is what it remains in samasa after the disappearance of the sup then adas anvaya sasajusho ruhu adar anvaya atoro raplata daplute ಅದ ಉ ಅನ್ವಯ ಅದೋನ್ ಆದ್ಗುಣ ಅದೋನ್ವಯ ದೆನ್ ಸುಪ್ ಅದೋನ್ವಯ ಓಕೆ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಸೇಜ್ ಯು ನೋ ಮೋಸ್ ಬಿ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೇವ್ ಗೇವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಇನ್ ಯು ಓಕೆ ಅದೋನ್ವಯ ಸೊ ಐ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಅನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಅನ್ ಸಚ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋತ್ರ You see, he is a sannyasi. Let us say, because that is what he is saying, you know. He is a sannyasi. He says, Sir, I am a sannyasi. And uh, I was born in a Brahmin family, a son of so-and-so. And then uh, this is my gotra. And uh, 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 so I lived as a brahmachari for quite some time. And now I became sannyasi. Paramahamsa Parivrat ho gaya. So now that is what I am. If this is the way you introduce yourself, now that introduction is farther from truth it doesn't gel with the truth at all as you may say sir uh, i was brahmachari of course to begin with then i got married and had two children also and then worked in uh, such and such place and then uh, then i decided to become sanyasi and so i have taken sanyasa only recently the 11th sanyasa jayanti we have kind of celebrated <laughs> every year one day full celebration <laughs> in memory of his giving up wife and children <laughs> the wife and children should celebrate why should you celebrate <laughs> they should celebrate if any why this guy should celebrate so this introduction about oneself it uh, it betrays a lot of fixation in his mind that he was born into a caste a particular varna and then a particular gotra and all that then this ashrama also he takes upon himself and only presently he is paramahamsa parivrat that is what he said acharya saying all of it is murusha that is what he said all of it is wrong so sayad bruyat uh suppose then the student says you put a suppose yadi suppose means uh, you are just uh, imagining a conversation and through the medium of a conversation trying to make a good point that is how it is so suppose he says bhagavan katham aham murushavadisham iti dear sir how do you say i said something wrong murusha something absolutely false that is the meaning of murusha not asatyam asatyam is uh, uh, you you purposefully said something which is not true it is not like that you know he is not telling an untruth in that sense he, he suppose he is he was not born in a brahmin family but he is bluffing that i was born in a brahmin family is that what he is going on no that is not what is going on therefore uh, it is not asatyam it is murusha means what he said is is factually correct but it is far from truth that is how it is okay uh, so how come i have spoken untruth you see i tell you before uh, uh, we look at the what acharya says i would like to make a comment people take the most absurd statements about themselves for holy truth that is what people do like we are told you are told that you are a body and you take it as the truth you are it is the most absurd statement 
you are told that you are born and you, are, you take that as truth. You are told that you will die and therefore you take that also as the truth. Otherwise, how do you know that you are going to die? So, and then you are told that a set of parents you have, you are born to a set of parents, it's, is it a truth or is it an absurd uh, statement? It is an absurd statement because you were never born. And therefore, uh, don't confuse it with Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava. Okay? Don't confuse with that. We are talking of Paramahamsa Parivrajaka Atma Tukvam. Okay? Uh, therefore, we are told that we were born to a set of parents. That is absurd statement, but you take that as gospel truth. And then uh, people learn, learn to like what others like. And people learn to fear what others fear. So this is how we were born and brought up. This is how we were brought up. Therefore we have inherited all these ideas we have inherited from parents, the family, and the society. We have inherited them. Now you come to Vedanta. Now, you, having come here, you reinforce them. That, that is not proper. You are not supposed to reinforce the same ideas having come to Vedanta. Here you are supposed to examine these, these ideas. So, when you adopt all these ideas that you are given to you, you inherit all those uh, thought patterns. Idea is what? A particular way of thinking. So, inherit all those thought patterns, then, uh, uh, then uh, you make them your own by inheriting. You have now become a creature of heredity and society. That is what you are very far from the reality of the Self. No surprise, we live by memory. That is how we live. You see, I was uh, standing under the tree and suddenly I have seen uh, this creature. What is it? It will be running here and there. Uh, uh, squirrel. I have seen it. And, uh, uh, I felt there is a, an intense activity in it. If you want to see life in all its glory, just watch the squirrel. It just looked at me and whatever it thought about me, whatever it is, then it uh, gave a serious look at me and then turned the head and looked up and down and uh, jumped to the tree. And then suddenly it found uh, a small nut and then it picked it up and it was uh, munching it with all its alacrity and then uh, it went up in a jiffy there was so much life in it whereas uh, we lost the quality of life so even before uh, death we have become dead people living by memory that is how we live, because you don't know life, because you look at life through the prism of the memory. We live by memory and we act by habits. You think about it? So you wake up and then Aham Brahmana Putraha, that is how you wake up. You are not a Brahmana Putraha in the sleep, but you wake up Brahmana Putraha. So I am Sudraha. Therefore, he is uh, inferior, I am superior, whatever. <coughs> so, and then live by habits. Live by habits means you worship the gods that you worship by habit. And uh, you can say, you look at a woman as a wife by habit. So, there is no uh, freshness in it, there is no life in it. We live like uh, dead people because we live by memory. Memory is past, memory is dead only, what else it is? And when you live by memory, that is what the life is. You should not be like that. You should meet the life on its terms, 
and take it as a challenge from day to day, moment to moment, and you should not allow the my, the mem- the memory to intervene. Then comes some freshness into life, and then uh, the world looks different to you. It will not look the same world because you are looking at the world through the prism of your memory and habits. When you look at you keep the memory aside and look at the world. You look at you you look at the glory of life. You look at the marvel of the presence, and then you can declare sarvam kalvidam brahma. That becomes Vedanta. Therefore, uh, the, we have to examine the way we conduct ourselves and the way we live. So, you just can't say this is the this is the mold given to me by my parents or by my guru and I have to fix myself in this mold and live like that, then uh, you don't know what is life. That is not life, that is death. Therefore, we should not remain ignorant of ourselves. See, people ignorant of themselves and uh, also ignorant of the true interest. What is the true interest in life? The true interest making money is the is it the true interest no money enslaves us rich people they do not own the money they are owned by the money they are slaves to the money they cannot step out of the trap that the money the riches have prepared for them they cannot step out so therefore pursuit of money is not your true interest Suppose you are pursuing sense of pleasure like overeating etc. That is not in your true interest. Suppose you are performing a rituals with a desire to fulfill a desire. That is not your true interest. You should know that. It is a pity that you have not known yourself. You are blessed that somebody comes and tells it to you. Really? People do not know what is their true interest. So they pursue false aims. You pursue fall, when you pursue a heaven above, you are pursuing a false aim. Don't do you, don't you know? It's Jagat Mithya. When Jagat is Mithya, heaven is included in the Jagat. So Ramana Maharshi was asked, Sir, is heaven real? This is a very interesting conversation. How the Maharshi sees things with a clarity that is very unique to him. So uh, the Purana stock of heaven and the rituals stock of heaven. So you perform a heaven, a ritual, you go to heaven. Darshapurnamasabhyam Swarga Kamo Yajeta. So if you have a desire for heaven, uh, so you should perform this Ishti, one day ritual. Now why should you desire heaven? Why not? Is the, is, is the life not heaven now? No. So now the life that we live is opposite of heaven. Therefore we want to so badly the heaven. And now the promise is given. You perform this karma and wait for death. And after death you are sure to gain heaven. So this is uh, how we were, uh, we were uh, brought up. This is what you have understood in the name of Shastra or tradition. This is the blessed thing that you got. And you give a nice name to it. (coughs) So, therefore, uh, in pursuing the heaven, you are pursuing a false aim. And so Ramana Maharshi was asked. So this is how they say so much about heaven. Is heaven real? A question is asked like that. Then he asked, what is your opinion about this world? Is this real? Now, what the other person will answer? He cannot answer that. Then the Maharshi says, if you think this world is real, then heaven also could be real. But if you know that this world is not real, then heaven is also not real. Therefore, people pursue false aims and no surprise, they are always frustrated. It is a, 
You see, you look at a, a, a business man who makes a load of money and look at him, is he frustrated or not? You ask him, assuming that he opens his heart before you, generally they don't open their heart. They put a very, uh, a very respectable face. But suppose he opens the heart, you will know how frustrated the person is. And the people who pursue sense pleasures, they are equally frustrated, artha kama. And then these ritualists, they are the most frustrated of all. As part of the ritualism, they keep away from all the pleasures of the world. And then they look at the worldly people and become jealous of those worldly people. In the childhood, we were told we should not eat food prepared from the onion. Onion we should not eat. And then onion has a smell. When you roast it uh, oily and stuff. Pakoda, you know. You must be knowing pakoda. There is a thing called pakoda nomics. So, <laughs> there is really like economics, it is a model of economics called pakoda nomics. So, there is a pakoda. In that pakoda, there is onion and uh, it will be, you can pick up the fragrance of that roasted onion. Onion roasted in oil. So you get it. And you feel like eating it. You want to eat it. The other person is nicely eating it. 100 grams he purchased and he is eating it. You too can eat a piece of it, no harm. But you should not eat because Brahmana Putraha. So I should not eat. Then uh, I am jealous of that person. I curse my fate and keep away from that onion pakoda. <laughs> what a life it is. <laughs> Most frustrating thing it is. <laughs> <coughs> and then these upasakas. The, an upasaka is like a person who has taken a bath in castor oil. That is what a rupasaka is, all castor oil on his body. How easy he will feel, how comfortable he will feel, all castor oil, that is how a rupasaka is. The most uncomfortable fellow, and he will, he will, if you go to this near, near him, he will put some castor oil upon you. These rupasakas, my God, they are most confused people. And uh, so, people are frustrated. And then there is no way out. There is no way out. From this human predicament, there is no way out. So that is how the samsara is. But fortunately, there is a way out. Within easy reach, there is a way out. So what is the way out? Not a conversion to another set of ideas. That is not a way out. You see, till yesterday I worshipped Venkateshwara Swami. From today onwards I will worship Shirdi Baba. So is that a way out? No. A new set of ideas, another set of ideas. You convert it to another set of ideas. The ideas you inherited from ignorant parents you give up and inherit some other silly ideas from another group. And then you convert it to new set of ideas. Is it a way out? No. Then what is the way out? The way out, that is how it, the whole thing is progressing. I am anticipating and telling you, if you are prepared to listen and think, the way out is a liberation from all ideas. That is the way out. All ideas of yourself and all patterns of living, all habits of living, a liberation from all that is the way out. But then people may not have the courage to go for such a way out which is within easy reach. So just I have examined the human predicament. Now let us see what the young man says. So he says, what is wrong with it, sir? I seems to have told the truth. How come I have told an untruth? Murusha avadisham katham. Tam So then the Acharya may have to say, may have to address the student and say like this. 
यतस्व भिन्न जात्यन्वय संस्कार शरीर जात्यन्वय संस्कार वर्जित आत्मन प्रत्यभ्यासी You see that prayoga. It is again lung. All lung prayogas are difficult. So prati, abhi, those are the upasargas. Ajna, sihi. So that is the prayoga. Okay. So janati, lat, ajanat, lung, ajna, sit, is the lung. I would prefer to check. I have said whatever I feel like saying. So, jnā avabodhane, that must be dhātu. So, prati abhi ātmanaha prati abhyajñāsī. Okay, that is what he is saying. So, how brāhmaṇa putraha adonvayaha ityādinā vākyenā Iti. So, dear sir, what you told is patently wrong. Yataha, because you versus the body. You versus the body. So, you is Atma. Atma is you. Versus the body. Now, body is what? Bhinna. It is Anatma. Bhinna. It is not Atma. It is Anatma. And then Jati. It has a birth, body, and anvaya. It has a family history. It was born into a particular family. Therefore, it has got anvaya, and it has a samskara. The samskara is brahmana. Means he has undergone, he has undergone that upanayanam, that is the samskara. Or at the time of birth, he was given jata karma samskara, and then all these samskaras are there: nama karanam, chaulam, and upanayana. That is how he becomes Brahmana, you know. Uh, therefore, all these samskaras are there. Now, these samskaras, uh, do they apply to Atma or do they apply to body? They apply to body. So, you don't do samskara to Atma. Samskara is a purifactory ritual. So, it purifies and it embellishes something. It is like a diamond which is brought from the mine. It is very dirty and shapeless and therefore not shining. That is the diamond. But it happens to be diamond. Then you give a, a, a kind of treatment to the diamond. First you wash it and maybe in some acid also so that all the impurities sticking to it will melt away. Diamond doesn't melt in acid. And then put it on a lathe and cut whatever they do. Then the diamond shines brilliantly. This is called samskara. So samskara means you purify it, you, may, you embellish it. The Vaidika samskara will be like that. But the effect of the samskara, in the case of a ritual, you don't see it. In the case of a diamond, we say it is samskara and you can see its effect. In the case of a Vedic ritual, how will you see samskara? Samskara you do, but the effect you don't see. Like lagunyasa. So lagunyasa, nyasa it is. Nyasa means to superimpose divinity upon yourself. That is nyasa. Nyasyate. Anena. It is nyasaha. So you superimpose the divinity upon you. Why do you need to superimpose the divinity upon you? Because you don't know that you are the divinity. And you believe that you are a sinner, papi, this and that. Therefore, you are obliged to superimpose the divinity upon you. Unless you do that, you cannot worship the divine. That is the karma kanda. So, how do you superimpose the divinity upon you? So, you do. So, angustha bhyanamaha, tadjani bhyanamaha, like that you do. And so, with the hands you worship. Therefore, you superimpose in the hands first. Then, kara tala kara prashtha bhyanamaha. Then Hrdayaya Namaha Sharasa Swaha Shikhaya Vashat Bahu etc. Kavajaya Hum Astraya Phat. So like that you superimpose. 
So all this you do. Then that is the nyasa. Therefore, you you do not. This is called samskara. Now you have finished the samskara. Laghu nyasa samskara is over. It is laghu means easily done. Shut. And hence in ten minutes it is over. We used to do mahanyasa. Two and a half hours it takes for the samskara itself. Two and a half hours. All all the mantras of the world are recited as part of it. And therefore, so you do the samskara. And by the time you have done samskara, now you are ready to worship the Lord. Now you are the same person. Nothing new happened to you. It may appear like that, but something must have happened to you. That is the vaidika. You know, is a karma is like that. So it is believed that a samskara has come upon you. So this is how we do samskaras to the body, not to atma. And there is an anvaya, a family history and all that, a lineage for the body, a birth to the body. Body is other than you. It is an atma. Now shariram, that is the body. Then come to atma. Atma, does it have a birth? No. Jati varjitasya. Does it have a lineage? No. Anvaya varjitasya. Is Atma, does it require any samskara? No, it is samskara varjitasya. You see, if the wall is impure, it, does, it looks very dirty, then uh, you take a sand paper and give a, uh, give a, um, give a fr- fresh um, rub it, and all the impurities fall off, and then give a fresh coat of paint, Asian paints, so you put it. Then that is the samskara for the wall. Okay? Now, to the wall you can do samskara. To the water you can do samskara. Like a kent. Put in the water into the kent, reverse osmosis or O. And then water, pure sparkling water come out of it. Water is given samskara. Vayu. Vayu can also be given samskara in Delhi. They do samskara to the vayu. The maximum number of air purifiers are sold in Delhi. You know that? For two reasons. Number one, a lot of people live in Delhi. Two crore people live in Delhi. The one of the biggest, it was called metropolis. Now it is megalopolis. Not metro anymore. That is one reason. Second, it is one of the most polluted in the world. Therefore, every house, they close the windows and yet the water, the air is very impure. So put air purifying machines and they give a samskara to the air. Now, can you give a samskara to the space? Does the space need a samskara? Answer is no for both questions. Okay, therefore. Samskara to the body, samskara to the mind. In between there are indriyas, samskara to the indriyas. All that is understood, no issue about it. But you talking about samskara to yourself, that is the atma, is something unthinkable. Because atma is a space-like. It is not, uh, it is not a material thing to be imparted a samskara. Therefore, you are thoroughly confused, dear son, that is what he says. So, Atmanaha Prati Abhyajnasi. You see, he throws a, 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 a googly at you. So, the Acharya, he throws a googly at you. Eh? And the Tikakara does not help at all. Atmanaha prati abhyajnyasi. He doesn't help at all. So, abhyajnyasi means you have understood that the atma, with reference to atma, atmanaha prati abhyajnyasi. Means you have understood that atma has all these qualities. I'll verify the meaning one more time, but for the present you take it like that. There is nothing unusual about it, the routine stuff only. So the routine statement about Atma. Therefore, these things, so you are superimposing upon Atma the qualities of body 
you are superimposing upon Atma. So how, how did I do that? Brahmana Putraha, you said. So that is the birth of the body. You have taken it and applied it to the Atma. Then Adon Vayaha, the lineage you talked about, that is of the body, you applied it to Atma, etc. So you have taken yourself entirely wrongly, except in one point, that is, you are not the body. Only that point is correct. There are two kinds of superimpositions. If you come in uh, Adhyasa Bhashya, of the Brahma Sutra beginning, so you superimpose the thing itself. It is called Arthadhyasa. You superimpose the quality of the thing, not the thing itself, but the quality you superimpose. It is called Dharma Dhyasa. When you say, I am the body, you identify with the, nobody says I am the body, but people identify with the body. Okay? So when they identify with the body, it is called Artha Dhyasa. Artha means a thing. One thing is superimposed on another thing. It is all mix up. Are you following? Mix up. So you mix up two things. So it is the body other than the Atma. But what do you do? You take yourself to be the body. In doing so, the body is superimposed upon the Atma. It is like, it is the rope. It is the rope, no, no, not anything else. But you take it as serpent. Therefore, serpent is superimposed upon rope. That is the language. Okay, Take it like that. That is the way we speak. Similarly, you are the Atma, pure, which is the light of awareness, nothing else. But you superimpose the body upon the Atma. So when you superimpose the body upon Atma, you take yourself to be the body. Atma is yourself. Therefore, body is now myself. That is called Arthadhyasa. And then uh, the qualities of the body you take and superimpose it upon you. Like the body has a birth. Birth is not body, birth is a quality of the body that you superimpose upon you. I was born and so and so dead. That is a, the superimposition of the quality of the body. And then uh, the body has a lineage. So I belong to that lineage. Now the body's lineage is taken for yourself. The body's birth taken for yourself. Body's samskara taken for yourself. This is what is called dharma dhyasaha. When you go, suppose a person goes to hospital, he is not well and goes to hospital. This happens all the time. And therefore, then if you present yourself before the doctor, doctor sir, uh, there is some problem with this body, please look into it. There is no superimposition in that. Suppose you say, Dr. Sam, I became sick, and so please treat me. Then it is superimposition. He cannot treat you. Nobody can treat you for that matter. Who can treat you when you, you, when you want to remain ignorant, and you don't budge from your ignorance? Who can treat you? Nobody can treat you. Then why to go to doctor? He knows how to treat the body. He cannot treat you. You are in, incorrigible, whatever. <laughs> so you are beyond the treatment. <laughs> I say like that, don't mind, okay? Give me some freedom for one, another five days. <laughs> so I'll uh, blabber something. So you are incorrigible. But your body can be treated. That is the saving grace. Therefore, the doctor will, he doesn't examine you. How can you examine you? You are a bundle of uh, beliefs and all that. What is there to examine? But he can examine the body. And he examines the body. And he doesn't examine the body of the Swami. He examines the body only. How do you mean to say he examines the body of the Swami? Suppose he examines the body of the Swami. It is called VIP syndrome and he will not be able to treat properly. That's why these doctors, when the wife or son becomes sick, they send to another doctor. Because instead of examining the body, he will be examining the wife. That's why he is not the right person to treat. Similarly, son, send to another doctor. Therefore, 
the qualities of the body you take upon yourself. This is called a dharma dhyasa. Shankara gave the examples of example of aham krushaha, aham sthulaha, etc. Ityadi, aham kanaha, that also. So I am very thin. Aryapa, you are not very thin. Body is very thin. I am a heavy set. Not you. Body is heavy set. Not you. So you have taken all the qualities of the body upon yourself. You see, this is the mistake. Why this mistake happened? The original sin, there is a thing called original sin. That is the Christian nomenclature. It is called Dukkham in Buddhism. It is called Avidya in Vedanta. That is the original sin. What is the original sin? Your belief that you were born. That is the original sin. And so, because the fact is, you were never born, nor will you ever die. Because birth is beginning, Adi, Anadi, Tvan, Nirgunatvat. We have seen Adi beginning, birth is beginning. Now you are a conscious being. The beginning itself comes to light in consciousness. The consciousness itself cannot have a beginning. You follow that? Suppose the consciousness itself has a beginning, then there must be another consciousness to record this beginning of the consciousness. Then this consciousness is no more a consciousness. That becomes the real consciousness. And therefore, you cannot speak of a beginning of consciousness. If it is consciousness, you cannot speak of a beginning of consciousness. Because the very idea of beginning and the very idea of time are within the consciousness. Therefore, you cannot speak of a beginning of consciousness. Therefore, (coughs) uh, you are assuming that you were born is the original sin. And uh, so, because of which you say, Aham Brahmana Putra. See, suppose in modern, in these days, suppose you go to a, a big acharya, big guru, who heads a matham or petham or whatever, big ashram or whatever, and tell him, Mahatma ji, I am born as a Brahmana, I am such and such family, I do namaskar to you. He'll be very happy. Right? Do you agree with me? Why he, he should not be happy? He should correct you. Why he becomes so happy? Because the only reason is he never bothered to look at Shankara's Upadesha Sahasri. (laughs) Not only Upadesha Sahasri. Not only Upadesha Sahasri. They have, in their head, they have a few books and all these books are attributed to Shankara. Not the Upadesha Sahasri Shankara. There are so many other Shankaras. Every generation has half a dozen minimum a very well-known shank.